Notion Subtasks and Dependencies. Today is day 39 of our 100 days of Notion journey and video series. Today we're going to talk about subtasks and dependencies, which really is Notion's way of talking about self-referencing entities. We're continuing our database focus, and today we're looking into how Notion handles subtasks and dependencies through self-referencing links. We're going to look at self-referencing links, parent-child relationships, related relationships, and as a little bonus, we're going to end with a timeline view, where we nowadays can take advantage of this functionality. As usual, we're going to create a page to work in. Let's call it subtasks and self-referencing items. We'll pick out a nice icon and a cover art. Let's pick this nice task image and we'll also add an icon to this. So we choose the remind ribbon here. If you remember back when we talked about task management a few weeks ago, we started with a very simple system. So we just created this list of to-dos. So we had task one, task two, and then all of a sudden we could create subtask one, sub task two, and then we could simply, using tab and shift tab, go to a deeper nesting level and to an outer nesting level. And the interesting thing is that when we started implementing this in a database, we couldn't really replicate this nested structure. So that's a little bit annoying. So th this kind of structure we couldn't replicate inside a database, but luckily, Notion released an update in December 2022, about a month ago when uh, I'm recording this, where the uh, subtasks and self-referencing items, and most importantly, the visualization of these, got a lot better. So we're going to look into that and take full advantage of the new functionality. To do this, we create a uh, inline database to work with. We do it inline here to just not create a huge amount of nested things, but normally we of course always want full page databases and separating the data sources from the content. So we call this subtasks db. As usual, we hide the database title so it gets a little bit cleaner and we start recreating what we have here. Task one, task two, we have subtask one, subtask two, and task three. And as you can see now, there, this is just a plain list. There is really nothing relating subtask one to its parent task. And that's what we're going to fix now. To do this, we use the relations that we dove deep when we looked in our database masterclass. I'm going to link this up here if you want to take a look at that. But in the masterclass, we related to different tables. And today we're going to reference the same table, but different items in the same table. So we click the little plus icon here to create a new property. Scroll down to go to relation. We select the same database and we see a little info here that says this database. So very helpful. It points us towards the fact that this is the same database. So we click that and then it suggests a very helpful name, related subtasks db. All right, so we're simply going to call this parent, since we want a parent-child relationship now. We have the parent, which is task two, and then we have the subtask one and subtask two that are children of that task. So the limit here, for me, it makes sense that you can have only one parent. So we select that, and then we say separate directions. All right, so this is a new one. It's not the exact same as when you link to different databases. So let's look at what Notion says here. Create separate properties for each direction of a two-way relation. Useful for modeling parent task subtasks. Blocked by, blocking, and more. So that's great. We, of course, want separate directions. And honestly, this is very similar to when you choose for a normal relationship to have it link back. So then we get this related property on subtask DB and we can call it whatever we want. So we simply call it children. And now we can look at this helpful little graph. So we have the parent subtasks DB and children subtasks DB. So that's great. We click add the relation and now we see that we got two different ones. All right, so let's see if we did this the right way. So what we want to do here is to tag the parent. So we want to tag task two as the parent, 
and for this one we want to tag task2 as the parent. Right, and let's see if we manage the relationship to the right way. So we try to link two ones, two things here. It doesn't allow us to do that. We can only have one. So that's great. We can have one parent and we can have multiple children. So that's exactly what we wanted here. I'm gonna move this first tail since I think that's a little bit more logical. So what we're missing now is the kind of visualization here. So we have this nice nesting going on and courtesy of Notion's update, there is actually a new option here. So we can click the view we have, we can select edit, and then we have a little new thing here. It says sub items and we even see a little new icon here. So here we have sub items and very helpful here, we have the parent item and sub items. All right, so we want to use an existing relationship and we are selecting a property here. So we want to select children for the property here, set on all new subtasks DB views or set on only this. So we can use this for all since the structure is built using this parent child property. And now when we go, up, go back, we can see that the table collapsed. So now we have a little triangle here, we click that and we see the subtasks showing up. All of a sudden now we can hide these properties. We see them only like this. Of course if you wanted to add a parent here it would be a little bit hard but as you can see you get a little new sub item thingy here. So here you can add subtask 3 and Notion by itself knows that this is how to relate them. We can do the same for task one, task one, subtask, and as you can see, we can also do this in nested levels. Nested subtask for 2.3. The little bonus tip I uh, alluded to in the beginning, we're gonna look at now. So if we remove this tags, we don't need that. And we add a date property. Great, so we have the date here and we can say that, okay, so we have the first task. We're uh, letting that span for the entirety of January. Then we have our little subtask. We're gonna do that the second week here. And then we have task one, subtask two, which we're gonna finish the last of January here. So now we have this date, which is perfect. We create a third subtask here. So we have task one, subtask three, and we set this, maybe we go for February for this one. And now we're looking at dependencies. So the timeline view here will be quite nice, but we actually want to say that we want to do task one first, task two, and task three. So let's create a new relationship property for that relate to the same database. And for this, we're gonna call it predecessor, meaning that this points to a task that needs to be done before this. We're gonna add the separate directions and we call it successor or things to be done afterwards. We add the relationship. Great. So for the view here, we're gonna turn on the predecessor and successor so we see what's happening. We look at the second task here, we add the predecessor. All right, I'll search here, it's task one, subtask, right? And for this one, task one, subtask two. Great. All right, so now we see that this one has a successor, which is the next one, which has a predecessor, which is the previous, and a successor, which is the next one. All right, so now we have all the plumbing set up here. So we can go ahead and create a new view. We'll select a timeline view. We show the timeline by date. We skip the title. We show the table next to it. So we see the same view, but as a table, that's quite nice. And after we've selected this, we select done. And then we have the sub items, which is children. The dependencies, where we don't want to select children, we want to select successor on all new subtasks DB views. Right, so now we have our item. It has a successor, which is the next item here. Great, let's look what we have. So we have our three tasks. Only one task is added to the timeline view. Let's expand this one. 
and we see how it looks. So we have the first subtask, it has a successor which is subtask 2, and it has a new successor which is subtask 3. So if we do the same thing, we can actually quite conveniently use this in the timeline view here. We'll collapse this one and we'll look at task 2 here. So we'll add this to the uh, timeline as well. We, uh, let's say we start this task in February and we have an end date which is by the end of March. Great. So we close this and now we see that task 2 showed up here. We can expand it and we see the subtasks. And we can actually start adding these subtasks simply using the graphics interface here. So this is a, a different way of adding that date information. We have the subtask here, subtask 3 here, and as we can see, we see the new nesting here. So we can add that on the timeline as well, so we see that. And the second thing that you can see is that we have a little extra handle showing up here, which is quite nice. So we can say that the same way we did in the table, we can click here and we can drag and we can say that subtask 2 depends on subtask 1, subtask 3 depends on subtask 2. And then we have a little nesting going on here. We collapse it and we see only the parent task. We expand it and we see both parent and child. And this collapsing we can do all the way up, so we see it back here. Here we can add a little dependency between the first and the second task. We can also, if we want, add more dependencies. We can say that it, it actually relates to subtask as well, or even to a very deep nesting level. If we then would open this, we would see that we have both a parent and a predecessor, and that they differ. We can do the same with task 1 here, that is linked to multiple. So we open that and we see that it has multiple children and also multiple successors. Now we have our task management system. We have the timeline view. We have the quite complex linking of parents and children as well as successor and predecessor. We could of course go in here and we can say we want a new property, which would be a checkbox and we call that completed. So we get back our main functionality here. We move that to the top, we close it, we go to the table view and we say that for properties we want to show the completed checkbox. And now all of a sudden we can start completing our items in the timeline. We can go back to the table. In the table view we don't really have the predecessor successor the little UI, the little handle we can drag, so if we want to manage those, we need to have those two columns here. What we can do is that we can add the um, completed checkbox. We can move the completed checkbox to the beginning here. We can collapse it. So what happened now is, as you can see, the little arrow is added to the first column, no matter if it's the title or if it's some other property. So we have the checkboxes here. We can check them and maybe we make, we make it a little bit larger so we see it even for the nested levels. And now we can use this to check off all completed items. And this of course is synced with the timeline view of the exact same thing. This is all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to catch more of this, please smash that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss anything. And maybe you've noticed something throughout the course of this video. Hopefully you can hear that the sound has improved. I just purchased a new microphone and I really hope you enjoyed the sound coming out of it. Thank you very much for joining. I hope to see you in the next one and have a very nice day.